and namaste everyone. <clears throat> well, last evening I was sort of getting oriented or preparing for today's interlude, reviewing the daily messages that we normally go over and take a look at, review during the interlude. And then also what came up was getting in touch with or looking at what I think all of us are probably um, to some extent aware of or maybe even can feel is what I feel is, in, is some of the unrest that's occurring not only in the US, US of A but also in other countries as well in relation to you know all of the election stuff and the president particularly the presidential election some like it some don't but it's the way it's it seems to have hit hit an, a chord or a nerve a deep nerve so to speak in many many people quite frankly i have i've never experienced or seen this much unrest regarding a presidential election in my 40 years of being here what <laughs> Just wanted to see if you were alert <laughs> in my lifetime right now, put it that way. <laughs> and so looking at all of that is just what was coming up. And this was after I had, so to speak, prepared for today. <laughs> and around, uh, I think it was around 10 o'clock, I had to go out to get some uh, glue, Gorilla Glue is better than Crazy Glue. And there's a little store in um, a small town, convenience store in a country, small country town that's close to here. I've been over there to it several times. And while I walked into the store, evidently around that time, you know, not many it's a time when you can go in and nobody's in there at all. And so I walked in and I walked back to where looking for, you know, looking for the glue. The teller or clerk was evidently in the back somewhere. And so while I was back there looking around, you know, I'm in an area of the store where actually they can't, I can't be, I couldn't be seen by the store clerk. And so while I was back there, store clerk came back to the cash register, still didn't see me, and then this guy comes in, and they get into a conversation, they still hadn't seen me. And the guy said, they started talking about the election, after a few brief words, the guy said, I'm sure glad we finally got a president in office that's going to get rid of all the Mexican and, floor, and foreign, Mexicans and foreigners. I was, I, was, I was hearing that, listening to that. And after a while, 
short time, I started walking up from the back. You know, the guy had gone. And I started walking to the counter toward, I didn't get my glue. And the lady behind the counter, uh, whom I had seen there before, she looked at me and said, uh, she said, oh, we weren't talking about you and your people. This is one of those things where I was, again, another one of those things I was reluctant to share, but it's what's coming up. Is it okay with everybody? <coughs> and so, um, I got into a little bit of a conversation with her, and I said to her, I said, well, I'm part Mex Mexican. And she said, uh, oh, I didn't know that. And so um, I said, um, you know, you might be too, smiling. <laughs> you might be too. I said, have you ever seen those shows or commercials on television about uh, Ancestry, it's called what, Ancestry.com, mm -hmm. Heritage.com? And I said, you ever seen the people who come on them, who are on there talking about how they had traced their ancestry and what they thought they were, like they thought they were 75% or 90%, which we're talking about what, the body. 75 or 90% uh, say, I'm just throwing this out, German, and then discovered that they weren't German at all, that they were something else and had a higher mixture of this. And they, sh almost, they show it on a pie, almost like a pie chart sometimes on the commercials. You, anybody ever seen it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know. And so, you know, and I, I, she and I, I was talking with her about that. And uh, I said, you know, you, probably, you might have some Mexican in you, some foreign blood in you. And she said, yeah, I've seen those too. You know, I hadn't thought about that. And so um, I don't know if you, and there's one where this, on one of these commercials, where this one guy had thought he was something like a 75 or 90%, maybe even what he called, quote, pure uh, Irish or something like that. And then he come to, and he was wearing some, he would, there was a holiday with this particular nationality that you wear certain, a certain garb. And he had gone out and he had bought all this stuff and he had been doing that for years, you know, in that particular, celebrating that particular holiday that way. And he, I, I can't remember the name of it. Yes. Go ahead. Frankie, he, he changes from later hosen to a kilt. Yes, that's it. <clears throat> well, later hosen, and then he had to go out and get a kilt. <laughs> You know, and um, I didn't stay there at the store long. Uh, I did, but we were talking about this. And she became very quiet, very quiet. And I left. I left her with that. I just left her with that. So as I was coming back, what was coming up to me, go, there grows my preparation for the day. <laughs> so that seemed, but it is all, but it is actually prep, all preparation. Because what the daily messages, Ramana Maharshi's daily messages is about, is about what? It's about us releasing this identification with the body and the mind, isn't it? And what has, what has a nationality? What has a race? What has a sex? What has a gender? Isn't it the body with all of its history and so forth? Isn't all that just history, conditioning, et cetera, et cetera? 
So that to me, that is exactly what Ramana Maharshi, Jesus, A. Ramana, Aham's teaching is all about. It's about realizing the being that I am, the being that we are. And being has no gender, has none of that, none of that. And the problem, if you want to call it a problem, this issue or challenge is awakening to who and what we are, which is the being, and that takes care of all the rest of the conditioning, the likes, the dislikes, the hurts, the pains, etc., etc. Now, I must admit, there was a, certainly was a time in my life if I had been standing back there hearing all of that, there would have been reaction. Definitely, and I could feel, I didn't want to, you know, there was a feeling going on in me, you know, when I heard that, oh God, I don't need to hear this, shh, y'all can finish it. I'm just telling you the truth. But immediately, no, accept it. These weren't the words that went through, but it was the feeling. As Linda was talking about on Friday night satsang, when she was sharing from her talk that this is what the situation now is what we've been practicing for. <laughs> I remember that. This is what I've been practicing for. <laughs> this is what I've been practicing for. Now, am I going to react to this or am I going to Take it in, take responsibility in me for what, for what feelings are coming up, transform that. Or am I just going to walk out of the store and don't say anything to the lady, you know, or maybe get gruff or whatever. Or if the guy, who knows, if the guy had been there and I'd have said, there was a time I'd have said something to him, it might would have been a fight. You got me? Or I would have been saying them AHs. Associated with, associates of happiness, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was to be there with her and have that dialogue. Not putting her down, because what good would that have done? But the mere fact that she said, when we were talking about the ancestry and all of that, you know, using what was coming up, which were the commercials, the mere fact that she said, you know, I had never thought about that. Do you think that that may have a little bit of influence on her, that she may start looking? From that perspective, from the perspective of where I felt the guy was coming from, probably every one of us here in this room and on this call have a part foreigners. Aren't we? <laughs> All of us. But is it ever looked at? But you see, it's not even about stopping there and seeing that from a body standpoint that I have or we have a mix of maybe all because if you take it back keep taking it back I'm sure from what do you call the ancestral heritage line I'm pretty sure that we can that we take keep taking it all the way back particularly considering all the lifetimes that we've had we have probably gone through every possible gender every possible or transgender or non-gender or race et cetera, et cetera. It's probably all there in the DNA somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> it's just that if I'm looking at right here physically now with this body, 
and what's apparent with this body, then I can call it, well, I'm of the African American or the Caucasian or American or whatever race. But that's even at the body mind level, that's not the truth. And certainly not from the spiritual level, because from the spiritual level, realizing that I am none of that, as Ramana Maharshi says, none of that. So isn't that our work, to, to live from the place that of knowing, absolute knowing, being, realizing that we are none of that? And what are the results of that? Isn't it peace, freedom from being identified with ego, with a sense of separateness, and with this sense of separateness? I'm speaking for me now. With this sense of separateness comes fear, doesn't it? Discomfort. As R. A. Ramana used to call it, dis ease. And it took me a long time in the early days to get when he said he used to we'd be reading from a particular book, Handbook to Perpetual Happiness, which is one of his books, and every time he'd get to the word in the book it said it says dis disease, like having a disease but he would always pronounce it dis -eads. And it took me a while to realize, you know, I guess that's what is a disease is. Disease. So as long as I'm identified with a body and its history and its conditioning and its preferences, its gender, its race, etc., it's sent this there's a sense of separation and there is dis I'm in disease. I have a disease. Isn't it? It's a disease, isn't it? And it's the primal disease. It's the disease that manifests all other diseases or brings forth. So what's the solution? Isn't it love? Surrender. Doug says surrender. Is that what you said? Surrender. Isn't it waking up? to love or as love, as acceptance, as oneness. Which is what spiritual work really is all about, isn't it? I don't know of anything else that will give me or give us total freedom. Not saying anything is wrong with protesting, not saying anything's wrong with, what do you call it, being involved in advocacy, not saying any of that. But it was my realization through, after being involved in a harm for some time, because I, I was involved in a lot of the advocacy stuff when I was in the newspaper business in early years. But it I had to come to the realization that unless I'm coming from oneness, from freedom, from love, then the advocacy work that I was doing wasn't really cutting it. There was still separation. There was still an us against them. 
And that's what? That's position opposition. And, in, and my taking that position automatically draws up what? It's opposition. And that's okay. It's accepted if I'm coming from inwardly being an acceptance, which is not a position. It's just being. So what was coming up also was to share a little bit. I was going to share it all so that we we here on this call and here in this room to me do have and can have, can have and do have a great influence on neutralizing this unrest that's happening. By just being who and what we are, being the peace. Not trying to make peace, but being the peace first, ourselves. And I can only be in absolute, complete peace and oneness if I'm in the heart, in the I amness, living from the I amness. Call it the awareness. Bhagavan calls it the self, the heart too. And to me, that's our that that is our contribution to the world, the world community, and to ourselves. And that is what is, to me, is most needed right now. Again, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with protesting or whatever, but it's not doing it from a sense of separation, anger, resentment us against them. But it's taking responsibility in the moment for what I'm feeling, what's coming up, and neutralizing it in me. And then acting from that place, from this place. <clears throat> 